welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. So far, we have looked at the background of what is Sandhi. We studied the process of speech production. We also studied the how the concept of Sandhi is used in various traditional disciplines. And then we also studied what is Sandhi in Paninian grammar. We also in this relation studied the concept of Samhita. We took several examples in which we showed what is a Samhita and how it results in Sandhi. We also saw that in the traditional system of Paninian grammar, the Sandhis are dealt with under five categories, Ach Sandhi or Vowel Sandhi being the first one and we shall be dealing with Ach Sandhi in this particular lecture. Ach Sandhi is Vowel Sandhi. What does it actually mean? What does Ach Sandhi mean? Ach Sandhi means that this is a Sandhi in place of a vowel, Ach. What is Ach? We have already seen in the previous lectures in this course how the Pratyaharas get formed. So starting with the very first letter in the Pratyahara Sutras, namely A, and picking up an it sound coming at the end of the fourth sutra, namely Ayauch, we pick up Cha here and A before, we join them together and we get the term Ach, which stands for all sounds in between A and Cha and also a, which amounts to all the vowels stated in the Pratyahara Sutra and therefore Ach stands for a vowel. Now in Ach Sandhi, Ach that is a vowel which is or sometimes which are the substituent and what is known as the Sandhi what is known as the Ach Sandhi is the substitute in place of this substituent in the form of a vowel or in the form of two vowels. This substitute is either a vowel or it is also a consonant. This is very important. The substitute happens in place of a vowel. So the substituent is a vowel. And the substitute could be either a vowel or a consonant. But the substituent is extremely important. And because of that, this is called Ach Sandhi. Now this substitute in the form of either a vowel or a consonant takes place in the environment of two vowels being uttered in close proximity that is in Samhita mode. Which means that when two vowels are uttered immediately one after another, the gap that is required for the distinct comprehension of these two vowels is only remaining and there isn't any more gap in between these two vowels. That is the Samhita mode in which the Sandhi takes place. 
obviously in this vivaksha is at the background and we have already studied when vivaksha is at the background samhita is to be obligatorily made and in all those cases in all those places in such a situation one vowel or sometimes both the vowels they are substituted by a substitute sometimes in the form of a vowel or sometimes in the form of a consonant and this is the substitute so this is how atsandhi is referred to this is what atsandhi means in the paninian grammar this atsandhi is treated in the following sections there is a big section which begins with 6172 and goes up to 61113 this is the section of sutras which can be said to deal with ach sandhi this section is governed by the section heading samhitayam this is the sutra 6172 and this section heading governs the section up to 61157 the 61158th sutra starts dealing with the accent just before that there is this samhitayam adhikar that comes to an end from from 61114 up to 61157 that means the remaining part of the samhitaya madhikara they deal with some other topics for example from 61113 to 114 the two sutras deal with what is classified as visarga sandhi and will be dealt with in that section when we shall study visarga sandhi there are some more sutras which deal with prakriti bhava this is very important and we shall study this in detail as well 61115 up to 130 and then there are some sutras which deal with the augment s stated to be sut in paninian grammar from 61135 up to 157 the sutras in between that is 131 to 134 they also deal with the visarga sandhi and we shall de- be dealing with them when we study visarga sandhi in the course of the lectures in this course this big section in the ashtadhyayi in 6.1 can be divided broadly into two sub sections one of them is from 6172 up to 6183 and it is the sutra ekah purva parayoho which is 6184 which divides these two sections into two so from 6172 up to 6183 this can be said to be one sub section one type of sandhi and from 6184 up to 61113 this is another type of ach sandhi ekapurva parayoho can be said to be that adhikara sutra which divides the two sections in the ach sandhi this is an extremely important adhikara sutra ekapurva parayoho 
Now, the at sandhi that is stated between 6172 to 6183 is of a peculiar kind. This type of sandhi is called ekasthanika ekadesha sandhi. Ekasthanika ekadesha sandhi. What it means is that this is a sandhi where there is one substituent and in its place comes one substitute. There is one substituent and one substitute which is a by default situation and so this is not particularly referred to as Ekadesha Sandhi even though the substitute is one. So this particular explanation can be showed in the format of an equation in the following manner. If you have an input namely x plus y both being vowels and this plus sign indicates that they are in the Samhita mode and in this Samhita mode y is the right hand side environment then the output would be z plus y. z is the substitute and this z would be a consonant and this consonant replaces the one substituent x which is a vowel. This is the explanation in the form of an equation of ekasthanika ekadesha sandhi stated in the subsection namely 6172 up to 6183. In this equation the left hand side environments generally does not matter. It is generally a consonant. Because if the left hand side environment is a vowel, then there might be the same situation that might arise as shown on this slide. With of course some exceptions, but generally it is a consonant which appears on the left hand side, but that environment does not really matter as far as this subsection of Achandhi is concerned. To show it diagrammatically, we can say that this is A and this is B and both of them they are vowels and now the rules stated in this section of 6172 to 83, what they state is that if these A and B both vowels if they are uttered in a Samhita mode, then this A is replaced by this C. And B of course does not change, it remains as it is. But this diagram shows that there is one substitu substituent and there is one substitute. In place of A appears C. C replaces A. A is the substituent. C is the substitute, C replaces A and as a result the output would be C plus B. A plus B is the input and one of the sutras in these sections apply and then the output is C plus B. This is how this type of sandhi can be diagrammatically represented. This diagrammatical represent, this diagrammatic representation was first published in a review that was written by this author, by this instructor in 2006 in the annals of the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute published by that institute Pune. Now let us look at the explanation of the second type of Sandhi. This is stated from 6184 up to 61113. This type of sandhi is called Dvisthanika Ekadesha Sandhi. What it means is that this sandhi is such that 
there are two substituents dvisthanik two substituents and in their place comes one substitute ek adesh which is a very unique very peculiar kind of situation and that is the reason why this sandhi is generally referred to as ekadesha sandhi two substituents and one substitute that is why this is referred to as ekadesha sandhi this type of sandhi is governed by the adhikara sutra ekah purva parayoho in this sutra there are two words ekah and purva parayoho ekah is one one of ek meaning one purva parayoho is 62 of purva par which means in place of purva and par purva means earlier or before which indicates the left hand side environment par stands for later or after which indicates the right hand side environment so in all what this sutra means is that in place of the earlier and the later sounds in place of earlier and later vowels there is one substitution one substitute what it means is that in place of the vowel that comes before and the vowel that comes after in place of both of them comes one substitute in the form of a vowel and also in place of the left hand side environment and also the right hand side environment appears one substitute in the form of a particular vowel this is in brief what this sutra means and this is an adhikara sutra so this governs this entire subsection and so this continues and appears in each and every sub sequent sutra in this particular section in the form of an equation this particular sutra can be explained in the following manner if x and y is the input x plus y is the input and both of them are vowels where y is the right hand side environment with reference to x and x is the left hand side environment with reference to y the output is z remember the input is x plus y both vowels and now the output is z only one element and this z substitute is a vowel and this vowel replaces both the substituents x and y in their respective environments so this is the difference between the previous subsection and this subsection now to show it in the form of a diagram once again we can say that there is this a on the left hand side plus b on the right hand side and they both are uttered by the speaker in samhita mode that means that there isn't additional gap than what is required for their distinct comprehension and then in such a case sutras in this particular section they become operational and then in place of a and b we get c as the substitute this is the input a plus b and c is the output this diagrammatic representation was first published in a review that was written by this instructor in the annals of the bhandarkar oriental research institute pune in 2006 now what are the examples of both these types let us take a look at them one by one here are the two examples of the first kind where a plus b and a is replaced by c ekasthanika ekadesha so the first example is yan sandhi stated by the sutra eko yan achi 
The second example of this type a plus b a is replaced by c is a yava yava sandhi stated by this sutra ho yava yava and some other sutras as well. Then here are the examples of the second type. There are five examples. The first one is guna sandhi stated by the sutra ad gunaha. Then there is vriddhi sandhi stated by the sutra vriddhi rechi. Then you have pararupa sandhi stated by the sutra engi pararupam. Then savarna dirgha sandhi stated by the sutra akas savarne dirgha. And finally, the fifth one, Urvarupa Sandhi, stated by the Sutra Engah Padanta Dati. There are some additional sutras also explaining these five types of Sandhis, which we shall deal with when we study these Sandhis. But these are the sutras which primarily state these five types of Sandhis. And remember, these five types of sandhis are of the type where a plus b and both get substituted by c. This is a very important, very crucial kind of distinguishing feature between these two types. There are two types, there are two examples of the first type of sandhi, ekasthanika ekadesha, namely yan sandhi and ayavayava sandhi and there are five examples of the second type of sandhi namely a plus b and both of them get replaced by c dvisthanika ekadesha and these are those five types what is the feature of these sandhis we see that sandhi is a vikara or vikriti when two vowels they are part of the element, they are considered as prakriti and the sandhi which is brought about by these sutras in this section, this is what is a vikara or a vikriti, vikriti as a modification. There is a modification, there is a substitution as against two vowels which remain in their own form, also in the Samhita mode, which is also known as Prakriti or Prakriti Bhava. And in fact, we shall study this Prakriti Bhava type of Sandhi when we take that up later on in this course. It is a matter of question whether to call it a Sandhi, but the Paninian grammatical tradition has included the Prakriti Bhava as part of the Sandhi chapters and therefore the Sandhi chapters are generally referred to as Pancha Sandhi Prakaranam in the traditional texts like Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi. They are called Pancha Sandhi Prakaranam including the Prakriti Bhava. Actually Prakriti Bhava is the absence of Sandhi still because it is in contrast with the other types of sandhi, it is still included in these five subsections in the Paninian grammatical tradition. This is a very important feature of sandhi, sandhi as a vikriti or a modification. The next important question is, what is at sandhi an input of? As we saw, a plus B is the input and C plus B is the output. In one case, and A plus B is the input and C is the output in the other case. What this C plus B and C is input of? What does it feed into? And here are the answers. Swara operations, the operations dealing with the accent and we shall study this aspect in detail in subsequent lectures in this particular course. 
swara operations which happen after these sandhis happen so at sandhi is an input to these swara operations also operations where sentential combinations are input even there at sandhi becomes an input for example the compounds or the samasas like rajashv or gajanan similarly taddhit formations for example dasharathi or vyakaran generally after the at sandhi operations happen the sentence finally gets generated and is used in the process of communication so we have seen earlier where we quoted the vyakaran siddhant kaubudi which referred to the explanation of the term samartha as krita sandhi karyatvam samartha means krita sandhi karyam this is very important and a very crucial fact to remember we shall also study the interrelation of rules that are part of this particular section what is so important about them is that the operational sutras namely the vidhi sutras and all the sutras stated in this section barring a few exceptions like ekapurva parayoho most of them they are vidhi sutras so these vidhi sutras apply when the conditions or the environments of those rules <coughs> come into being when they exist in the process of derivation of the sentence generally the conditions for each rule is believed to be exclusive doesn't come into any sort of clash with any other sutra but in some cases these conditions are stated to be overlapping and this particular fact brings two or more rules into contact with each other this contact is of the nature of conflict and then there are principles stated within the ashtadhyayi which is all this conflict some principles which are stated explicitly and some other principles which are stated implicitly which are unearthed and explicitly stated by the later paninian grammatical tradition so when we study these sutras in this particular section we shall also keep an eye on the interrelation of rules and accordingly we shall study the examples this is the technical terminology that we should be aware of when we deal with sandhi in general and at sandhi in particular karyan or also referred to as karyi which means an element which undergoes an operation karya is an operation or modification so an element which undergoes this operation is karyan or karyi then the other technical word is nimitta nimitta means conditions or environments in which the operations happen these are not explicitly used in the ashtadhyayi but they are very much part of the traditional vocabulary traditional terminology panini uses the terms sthanin and adesha sthanin means an element which has scope of application which is to be replaced and a sthanin is never explicitly uttered the word sthanin consists of the word sthana which means the scope of application this scope is in the form of meaning sometimes also in the form of the combination of verbal elements and then we have another term called adesha which means a substitution which is explicitly expressed when there is scope of application of some other element to be expressed we shall study 
at Sandhi using these technical terms. So, when we know what is a sthanin and what is an adesha, the next very very important term and the technique used in the Ashtadhyayi is sthani vadbhava. This will be also part of our discussion. This poses some questions and then there is an answer. The questions are, can the consonant substitute be considered as its substituent vowel as is the case with ekasthanika ekadesha? And also, can the vowel substitute be considered as its both substituents as is the case with dvisthanika ekadesha? Such an assumption can become an input for application of another rule. This is possible in case of Atsandhi, even though generally denied by the Sutra in the Ashtadhyayi, this is possible in case of Atsandhi with several exceptions and this will become part of our study. Similarly, the other important terminology that we need to remember is Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava. This is how the rules are structured. There is something called Uddeshya and something else called Vidheya. Uddeshya is something that is already known with respect to which an operation is stated by a rule. This is Vidheya and generally this Vidheya is what is new which is not known before. Uddeshya is generally in the form of conditions or the environments which pre-exist, which serve as the input. And Vidheya is an operation stated by the rule, something that is made known only by this rule statement. And the Vidheya in most of the cases in this particular section is the modification or the substitute also known as the Sandhi. So this Uddeshya Vidhaya Bhava is extremely crucial, extremely important when we study the sutras in the Ach Sandhi section. Most notably when we study the Pratyaharas and what those Pratyaharas stand for, these, these two concepts will become extremely important. To summarize, what we studied in today's lecture is that we studied the nature of Atsandhi, namely Ekasthanika Ekadesha. This Ekadesha is in the form of a consonant and also Dvisthanika Ekadesha and this Ekadesha is in the form of a vowel. The second type namely Dvisthanika Ekadesha is generally referred to as Ekadesha. We also got introduced to the technical terminology in this regard, Karyan, Nimitta, Karya, Sthani, Adesha. We noted the examples of two types of Atsandhi, Yan Sandhi and Ayavayava Sandhi of the first type and Guna Sandhi, Vruddhi Sandhi. Pararupa Sandhi, Savarna Dirgha Sandhi and Purvarupa Sandhi of the second type. We also observed that the Ach Sandhi takes place only at the final stage of the sentence derivation and its output is visible to only the accent rules. Now hereafter we study the various types of Ach Sandhi together with the examples. In doing so, we shall also study the sutras which state the Atsandhi. This we shall do in the subsequent lectures. Thank you very much.